everything this world has to offer. Young people, you can have all the sinful pleasures. You can have all the things that lures and entices. But if you've missed Jesus, you've missed it all. You've missed it all. And I pray this testimony impresses one thing upon our souls this morning. And that is nothing is more important than being ready to meet Jesus. Nothing on this earth is worth holding on to except Jesus. And the question I'd like to pose to each of you this morning in love and in deep concern, if Jesus were to come right now, are you ready for Jesus to come? Or, beloved, are there things in your life that you desire and you love more than Christ? If he would come right now, would you be able to look in his face and say, you are my one supreme desire? Or would there be sins and habits that you love more than Christ? Would there be worldly things that you love more than Christ? Tonight, if that's the case, or today, if that's the case, I want to invite you to listen to the words of Solomon and stop right now, wherever you are. No matter how young, no matter how old, stop right now and consider God and give God your best today. Amen? In the book of Hebrews, as we begin to close, chapter 12, Paul, whom this book is attributed to, gives us some incredible counsel in the light of what we study today. Hebrews chapter 12, beginning in verse 1 and 2. That's in the New Testament, Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. Paul tells us here, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lie aside every weight and the sin, which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. i got to pause right here. Paul brings out something very important. Two things, actually. He says, first of all, lay aside the sins. Oh, I'm so happy this morning. The old rugged cross is still open for business. Can you say amen? Beloved, if there's a sin in your life today, I don't care what sin it is. No sin is too big for God. you got 100 pounds of sin in your life, it's okay. The Bible says I've got 200 pounds of grace to outweigh it. For the Bible says where sin did abound, grace much more abounds. Can you say amen? Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is, but there's a sin in your life this morning. Young people, if there's something in your life between you and God that is a sin, a habit, whatever it may be, today I want to invite you right now, stop and consider God. Look into the face of Jesus and say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I give you my life. I give you my heart. But then he talks about something else, and I don't want you to miss this. Not only does he say to lay aside the sins, he says to lay aside the weights, which so easily he says. Have you ever wondered what are weights? Why do we have to lay aside weights? What are they? A hmm. weight, ladies and gentlemen, is something that in and of itself may not be bad. Hear that? But if it's keeping you back from relationship with Jesus, if friends. it's keeping you back from going all the way in a full It'd surrender people. to Christ, then that's a weight. For example, it might be friends and family. Now, are friends and family a blessing from God, yes or no? Sure they are. Sure they are. But sometimes friends and family try to hold us back, especially in young people. Peer pressure. Well, what my friends? Are good, and we're afraid to stand up. If so, friends are good, but if they're more important than God and they're holding you back from a Christian experience, sometimes it's even a spouse. Sometimes it's, it's family members. And if they try to hold you back from doing God's will and they try to drag you into sin and into the world, then God says you got to lay that stuff aside and put me number one. Amen? It may be your business. Now, there's nothing wrong with business. The Bible teaches to have business. The Bible teaches the hard work ethic. The Bible teaches self-reliance and making a good living and so on. All that's good and biblical. But to some people, business becomes an obsession. It becomes a thing where you work 18 hours a day. It becomes a thing where you have no more time for your family, no more time for your physical body as a temple of the Holy Spirit, no time for family worship. You can't even get to church on time. If so, folks, that's a weight. And you got to reprioritize. So your number one priority is still God. Amen? It could be, folks, television. It could be sports. Now, guys, there's nothing wrong after a hard week of work. You want to sit back and watch a little television. If it's good and clean and you, you know, want to relax, there's nothing wrong with that. But many, many a man, many a Christian man will be there in the sofa with popcorn and peanuts and Pepsi Cola. And they'll be there a half an hour in advance of the game. And they'll sit there for eight hours watching sports game after sports game after sports game all Sunday. And you don't even have time to have family worship. That's a wait. You got to get rid of it. Can you say amen? It's holding you back. And brother, this morning I want to encourage you if there's any sin, if there's even a weight in your life that's holding you back, give it all to Jesus. That you could clearly say in your conscience this morning, if Jesus were to come right now, 
There's nothing between my soul and my Savior. Stop and consider God. Then look at verse 2, the best verse. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author, and what else? Oh, I like that. The finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, I'm so glad God said I won't even begin to work. He said I'm going to finish it. Can you say amen to that? You know, I look back at that experience. That's been many years now. It's been over 20 years, 23 years, I think. And I'll tell you, folks, as I stand before you today, I'm not all that I ought to be. But thank God I'm not what I used to be. Amen? <laughs> and the part that I may not be fully mature, God has got me covered with his righteousness, and I'm perfect through Jesus. Can you say amen? And so are all of you. Some of you, God has just begun to work. The last few weeks we've been together in the seminar. I want you to know God says, I'm going to finish it to the glory of God. Whatever God has started in your life, he's going to help you grow day by day as you behold him, as you spend time with him. And the best days are ahead when you live to love and serve Jesus Christ. And so, y'all, there may be young people here today. I just want to encourage you young people, stop right now. Consider God. you got your whole life ahead of you. You can make good choices. You can be anything you want to be. You can reach your full God-given potential if you'll do it God's way. And by the way, I'm going to make a statement here. I am proud to say this morning that from age 15 on, I did it God's way. Didn't have to go through all the immorality. Didn't have to go through all the adultery. Didn't have to go through the drugs. Didn't have to go through the booze. Didn't have to go through all the worldliness. I thank God that from age 15 on, I did it God's way. And young people, if you want to have a happy home, if you want to have an incredible life, if you want to have God's love, if you want to have peace, if you just want to have the most incredible life you can ever imagine, do it God's way. Amen. It makes sense. And young people, I want to encourage you especially, stop right now, wherever you are, give God your best here today and for the rest of your life, and you'll be so glad you did. Some of you adults, you've been sitting on the fence way too long. God in this hand, the world in the other. God in this hand, the church in this hand, and, and sinful pleasures over here. There comes a time where you stop and you consider God and you give him your very best. Today, I want to invite you to do that.